This video will wrap up our discussion of spontaneous processes by introducing something which is frankly really cool. Coupled reactions are pairs of reactions where one would not happen unless another occurs. Coupled reactions are what controls the energy production in your body. That is right, coupled reactions help to maintain the processes that control life. I'm going to be on a soapbox for a minute or two now. When people say that they hate chemistry, this drives me crazy. When someone asks you what you are studying, chemistry, you say, I hate chemistry, they say. Maybe you have been guilty of this yourself. Boy, this chemistry class is really difficult. I hate chemistry. No one who is breathing hates chemistry. This is because chemistry controls life. You heard me correct. You are moving, blinking, digesting, and watching this video all because of chemistry. And not because of this chemistry class either. Because of the chemistry that is happening in your body right now. Don't believe me? Let me introduce you to coupled reactions. When your body breaks down glucose by this reaction, C6H12O6 solid plus 6O2 gas results in 6CO2 gas plus 6H2O liquid. This is a spontaneous reaction because it is a combustion reaction. But our body cannot just break down glucose this way because this way is not very efficient. So our body breaks down glucose in a series of steps called glycolysis the citric acid cycle, and an electron transport chain. In glycolysis, each mole of glucose is broken down into two moles of pyruvate. An early step in this process is addition of phosphate to glucose to produce glucose 6-phosphate. This reaction is not spontaneous because it has a delta G naught reaction of positive 13.8 kilojoules per mole. This reaction is coupled with the hydrolysis of ATP for negative. This molecule is an energy store of your body. When this molecule breaks down into ADP3 negative and a hydrogen phosphate ion, HPO42 negative, this is a spontaneous process with a delta G naught reaction of negative 30.5 kilojoules per mole. ATP4 negative hydrolysis is coupled to a few reactions in glycolysis to make this process actually happen. This example illustrates another important point about reactions and delta G not reaction values. These values for coupled reactions are additive. This is true for any set of reactions, not just for those occurring in living systems. For the first two steps of glycolysis, ATP4 negative aqueous plus H2O liquid results in ADP3 negative aqueous plus HPO4 2 negative aqueous plus H positive aqueous. Delta G naught reaction equals negative 30.5 kilojoules per mole. C6H12O6 aqueous plus HPO42 negative aqueous results in C6H12O6PO32 negative aqueous plus H2O liquid. Delta G naught reaction equals 13.8 kilojoules per mole. Pause the video now and add these two reactions together. What do you get as an overall reaction? Remember to cancel out the same reactants and products on either side of the reaction and add together the two delta G naught reactions. Because equal quantities of H2O and HPO42 negative appear on both sides of the combined equation, they cancel out leaving the net reaction C6H12O6 aqueous plus ATP4 negative aqueous results in ADP3 negative aqueous plus C6H12O6PO3 2 negative aqueous plus H plus aqueous delta G naught reaction equals negative 16.7 kilojoules. Since the delta G naught reaction is negative, these coupled reactions are spontaneous. There are many other sugars that can enter the glycolysis process. It isn't just glucose. Fructose, galactose, and glycogen also have starting places in the glycolysis pathway. ATP4 negative also needs to be regenerated in your cells. The process of glycolysis only produces two ATP4 negative. This is coupled with complexes in your mitochondria. Glycolysis, the citric acid cycle, and the electron transport chain also produce other energy containing molecules. Electrons from these molecules are then transferred to molecular oxygen, coupled to the formation of an additional 32 to 34 ATP molecules by the electron transport chain. Electron transport are critical activities of protein complexes in the inner mitochondrial membrane, which ultimately serve as the major source of cellular energy. 
Another example of coupled reactions is what happens in plants when they do the opposite of the glucose combustion reaction. They form glucose and oxygen from carbon dioxide and water. The primary source of energy for life on the earth is the sun, which is the energy source for photosynthesis, the biological process that transforms radiant energy into chemical energy. Chemical energy is stored in biological molecules, which can then be used as fuel to provide an organism's energy needs. Plants combine multiple coupled reactions to produce the oxygen gas that we breathe from the sun's radiant energy. Another interesting fact about plants is that most of the mass of trees and plants comes from the carbon dioxide that we breathe out. There are other examples of coupled reactions that just speed up or slow down the main reaction. Iron will hydrolyze to rust with some water and oxygen. This is why you will see older cars with a lot of rust on them. If you couple this reaction to other metals, such as zinc or aluminum, it will speed up the rusting process. Or if you couple it to copper, it slows down the rusting process.